Yes, yes, yes. What is happening? Happy Friday. Welcome to show 430. 430. Was it 431? It's one of the two. I'm losing track now as the number's going up. So today is the last day here in Italy. Our taxi is going to be here in about half an hour. Uh, and then we're going to head in back home. I'm then going to Penny Fan in Wales to go and meet some of my elite brotherhood guys for um, to watch the sunrise at Penny Fan tomorrow um, and then do a little bit of walking and hiking and catching up with them all and then going home on Saturday. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. So today um, I wanted to talk about like happiness and um, trying to find a level of happiness without a level of conditioning attached to it. Um, I'm guilty of this. I know that some other people are guilty of this and um, I thought it would be a cool topic to talk about. I haven't got my mic so the sound quality might not be um, as good as it normally is. So let's get into it. Welcome to the Rise to Thrive show. I am your host, James Baldwin. And if you are coming through, then please do let me know by commenting down below. And I think the topic, we'll keep it on topic. So if you're commenting, what I want you to know is, do you put a level of conditioning to your happiness? Is there, are there conditions to you being happy? Okay, and I'll expand on what I mean that in a minute. And then please do share with someone that I know. So let me just show you the view for the last time. So this is my little balcony. That's my room in there. That's where we've been walking up to, up here. You walk up there and one dog goes off, starts barking. And you go through this little village and then it's like this domino effect. And yesterday we must have walked about 10 houses and all of the dogs are going off the first dog and it's carnage. And it's absolutely carnage. And we start walking past the village and the dogs are still going off. So we was a bit worried about coming back and the neighbors mauling us. <laughs> so, happiness. I'm putting conditioning on your happiness. Ooh. So one of the things that I used to do, um, and this, and, and, and what's interesting is, is the trigger for this and the deep rooted causes of this is that um, for many years, because we grew up really quite poor, financially, okay, but financially poor, um, growing up um, and because I lost my dad there were two there's, there's two in depth there's two in depth reasons why I felt like this okay losing my dad and being and, and not having real financial security growing up as a as a child so I used to put conditionings of financial status before becoming really content, happy, content and happy. Because we can't be happy all the time. I think that's the key thing to understand. You can't walk around with a smile on your face, turn around, yeah, I'm happy all of the time. Because that doesn't happen, right? But we can feel internally content, our mind, our emotions, our physical self. We can feel content about life. Um, and then in amongst that, we can feel happy, like I feel really happy I'm looking at this view, I'm feeling really happy, I'm going to go and see the lads in Wales, like for development day, I'm really happy to go, huh, I feel like happy in general in life, okay. But they used to put conditions on that um, financially because I was always worried about losing everything coming off the back of my dad. So like when my dad died, I was six years old and I would come on, I would always have this, oh, I've got to make sure there's lots of security for my family to feel content and feel happy which meant that I really was never happy or never content because I was constantly putting myself under pressure to achieve like a potential or certain financial status to be happy. And it's not that I needed financial status to go and buy nice things or to um, live a particular lifestyle or have nice watches or trainers. Um, it's because I feel, I had to feel a sense of security, a sense of I'm not gonna lose everything to then become happy. Does that make sense? 
So then that was a condition of my happiness. Like I had to reach a certain amount of financial status to be happy. And, and that affected other things like my relationship that I've, um, with, with my wife or my, when she wasn't my wife. That would then affect my um, health because I was too busy like feeling sorry for myself. I wasn't showing up as a high performer. I wasn't showing up as somebody who I felt like um, could really thrive and achieve in the world because I put conditions on. Other people will do or will have other other forms of conditions of happiness, such as um, you might have to be a particular weight to feel content and happy with who you are and how you live your life. So you might think, right, I'm not going to be happy until I reach this weight standard. Okay, some people might not be happy until they've reached a particular um, status within their career. Okay, so that status in the career then suddenly becomes um, the byproduct of your happiness. So unless you reach that status, then you become then you become just miserable. But we can achieve the happiness through the process. And this is the thing. So what I'm talking a lot about at the minute is the end state. So we're talking about that end state. This is where I, I have to get to before I'm happy. But from the point where we are right now to the end game, we call this the process. And I think if you love the process and you're working hard to the process and you're trying to achieve a goal or a status in your career or you're trying to reach a particular financial stability or you're trying to build a particular um, status within your relationship, where we can feel happy and content is the is the process, is, is the journey between the start point when you break through and the end point. And what you can achieve here is the growth of character, of personality, of values, of principles, of what you want out of life, of who you are, of how you handle hardship, with feeling progression, feeling control, feeling clarity. And these things are the things that allow us to show up as a high performer. These things allow us to raise our standards, stay disciplined, stay consistent. And that process can bring happiness. There's nothing to stop us. We shouldn't have to wait till we get to here before we're happy. We should be happy here or content. I'm not saying you should be happy, but the happiness and content will come through that process if you allow it. When you understand the small micro wins that you embed into your life when you see those marginal gains paying off while well, you look happier while well, you've lost weight while well, you seem you're more yourself because we get consumed into this bubble and then as soon as you go into the bubble that's when you don't start showing up that's when the performance starts dipping that's when you feel frustrated right so understanding that the process is the excitement is the happiness is the contentment. And by the way, you're not always gonna feel happy. You're not always gonna feel happy. I know it's mental, right? I don't even believe those figures are real. Um, uh, but it's, it's important that you understand this because when I put up a post the other day saying, talking about um, putting conditions in your happiness, lots of people were saying, I wish I could be happy. I wish I could be unconditionally happy. I w but you, why wish? You can be happy. All you have to do is find out what you love in life, what you love doing, and then follow that process. I'm happy because I'm doing what I want to do. I'm, like, I'm getting to see the world. I'm arranging days when I get to go and be around 20 to 30 guys in Brecon and have a really good time. I get to then go and hang out with my family. But you create your own happiness. The minute you feel like you've lost control of that is the minute that you start spiraling. You are in control of your happiness. You are in charge of your time, your actions, your decisions. So the first part of all of this changing is the state, the state of your mind, the narrative, the story. What you tell yourself every single day is where it starts, is where the 1% comes in, 1% a day. And changing that story and that narrative so that down the line you become a lot more content and a lot happier makes sense all right i'm off to go and catch my flight i will look forward to catching you on monday at 5 30 in the morning ready for the next show sunday night i will put up what we're going to be doing 
um, and these are really great. So like a couple of the guys are coming through and saying, um, uh, so Mikey B, who's one of my bros, I'm much happier now. I'm more in control of my time and energy, which is a really great point, right? As soon as you, um, as soon as you start realizing the control of your time and your energy, right? Like how amazing is that to be in control? So control's another big one. I want you to do me a favor, please, in the comments, once I end this live, tell me your number one takeaway, um, and I will get back to some of your comments when I get to Wales tonight. If you're at Wales, I'll see you tonight.